Inspired by the design strategies nature uses to adapt and survive, the Wies Institute for Biologically Inspired Engineering at Harvard University focuses on high-risk research and development to create new materials and devices to transform the world. The Wies Institute is enabling the next technology wave, which is biologically inspired engineering, which is this idea that in the past bioengineering took engineering principles to try to solve medical problems, and we are now uncovering enough about how nature builds, controls, manufactures, all the way down to the atomic, nanoscale, microscale, that we can begin to leverage that to develop new engineering innovations, and that's really what biologically inspired engineering is. I think the Wies Institute's at the leading edge of this, and we're really excited to be there. Our measures for success include the intellectual property we generate, corporate alliances, licensing deals, new startups, and having products in the pipeline in five years. And we also are unique in that we span from medical all the way to architecture and robotics, and for, for non-medical and medical applications, for materials as well. And we're extremely unique in that we've hired already 30 people from industry with 10 to 20 years of industrial experience in both team management and product development who we've integrated as full-time staff who work with students, fellows, faculty to actually help develop product programs that are much like industry but have the creative freedom of academia. This unique environment has led to the development of new products like W-Ink. To describe what W-Ink is, it's good to show the butterfly wing, which is called structural color. This beautiful color comes from structure, not from the dye. In other words, what it has is a network of pores of a certain size, and the size determines the color. What we've done is we added chemistry and fluidics to this system so that these pores can be infiltrated selectively where we want it to infiltrate, but not in other places. As a result, you have a liquid decoder. We have our film at the bottom of a cup, but first we're going to submerge it in water. As you can see, the water is safe to drink because our sample says drink. However, if we were to change the surface tension of the water by adding alcohol to it, then we'd get a completely different message. Now, as you can see, our sample says drunk, which means that you have enough alcohol in this drink to get you drunk. In its current embodiment, there's really three applications for WINC. There's straight encryption, there's liquid authentication, and there's liquid identification. For liquid authentication and for liquid identification, one big advantage that you have over much of the state of the art is simplicity. The fact that without a power source, with minimal training, maybe just a simple guidebook accompanying the strip, you can use this just like pH paper, but to distinguish between a much broader class of liquids. Another project in development is Stretch Me. Stretch Me rubber is a mechanically responsive rubber which changes optical properties. We can pattern this uh, process so that it reveals uh, secret messages or logos. So I have a, an example here where in the relaxed state it's transparent and as you stretch it, it reveals a message, whatever message you want, whatever size you want. This is a, a very fast and simple process. Uh, it's very inexpensive as well. Wies Institute provides the opportunity to translate these innovations to market-ready projects. A great thing about Wies, like in the context of taking a, a technology from its purest form to the market, is that they're really well connected to industry. And so, for example, we, we've been able to network with potential customers, so they can be small businesses, they can be larger businesses, who might have use for our technology in something that they're doing. At the same time, we can also contact and network with venture capital firms, potential business partners. The Wies Institute is in its earliest stages of development, we're only two and a half years old. I think we have put together a strong base of people, concepts, new models for innovation, collaboration. We don't give faculty individual labs, we have collaboratories where we have faculty and staff together around projects and they, they're much more flexible to change over time. We have collaborations with industry, we have industrial people from industry working among students and fellows. The future of the Wies is, is really going to depend on us proving that this model can bring brilliant new innovations into products that actually change the world and help people.